from the WYLN studios in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. WYLN Evening Edition at 5.30 starts right now. Good evening. It's Monday, October 26, 2015. I'm Gary Perna. Well, tonight we begin a house was shot up in West Hazleton Sunday afternoon. The house is at 117 West 22nd Street, about six blocks from the Hazleton Area School District Complex. It happened about 345 in the afternoon. West Hazleton Police Chief Brian Buglio said there were about 10 shots fired. He said police spoke to two individuals who lived at the house but gave conflicting reports as to what to happen. Buglio said they did a protective sweep of the house and found what appeared to be a marijuana growing operation. They found lights, a ventilation system, and plants ready for sale. 53-year-old Nixon Jarquez was charged by borough police with felonies for conspiracy to manufacture, deliver, or possess with the intent to manufacture a controlled substance and theft of, other, theft of services. He was arraigned Monday morning by Magisterial District Judge Rick Cronier in Wilkesbury. His bail was set at $50,000. A West Hazleton man is in county prison after a Sunday morning holdup at the Pantry Quick in West Hazleton. Police say 22-year-old Sean Ortiz walked into the store around 10.30, pulled a knife, and demanded money. He was picked up shortly thereafter and charged with two counts of robbery and a list of lesser charges. Ortiz was arraigned by District Judge James Dixon Sunday night. He was unable to post $100,000 bail tonight. He is also in the prison. He is a prime suspect in at least two other robberies at the same store. West Hazel Police Chief Brian Buglio says a knife was also shown in all the robberies. Another house was shot up, this time in Hazleton, and again, it's on the northwest side. It happened about 2.15 Sunday morning. Police did not give an exact address, but said it happened on James Street, somewhere between Diamond Avenue and 5th Street. Just two weeks ago, a house at 3rd and James Street was shot up in the afternoon. Police say there were no injuries. There were also reports of gunshots at 4th and McKinley Street nearby at the same time. Well, a fire broke out in the city of Hazleton around 4 o'clock this morning on Tamarack Street. It happened at 9 West Tamarack Street, the home of Tamarack Auto Sounds. Smoke could be seen pouring out of the brick structure shortly after firefighters were dispatched. Firefighters extinguished the fire in less than an hour. We spoke with Fire Chief Donald Leshko this morning. This should came in as 126 West Tamarack Street. Upon our arrival, crews found it to be located at... Tam West Tamarack Street between Wyoming and Laurel is a commercial garage. It's actually attached to 126, 124 North Wyoming Street. Uh, found heavy smoke uh, coming from the building, gained entry into the structure. We found the fire in the uh, rear of the building. Crews made a quick knockdown. According to Leshko, firefighters kept the fire from spreading to the front part of the building. Again, we held the fire to the uh, garage area. That suffered heavy fire damage to the rear, along with smoke and water. The beauty salon in the front suffered uh, smoke and water damage at this time. The chief said there were no injuries. Wyoming Street was closed while crews were operating on scene, and PPL was called in to cut power to the entire building. Leshko said some neighboring business did sustain smoke damage. There was some smoke in the building, which is uh, the building next to the uh, beauty salon uh, and the beauty salon. We, we ventilated the areas, the uh, smoke out of those buildings, evacuated the apartments for a time being, uh, just till we make sure we have the fire under control. Uh, those occupants have been allowed to return to their residence. According to the chief, the fire was ruled unintentional due to an electrical malfunction in the garage. No word when or if the businesses will be able to reopen in Hazleton. Well, there was a fire in the Valmont Industrial Park in West Hazleton Sunday afternoon. It broke out about 4.30 at Griff Brothers, located at 95 JC's Drive. Deputy Fire Chief Brian Carr said the fire was in a hopper holding plastic and the fire spread to the roof. Smoke was visible at a time from about 93. Carr said it did not extend elsewhere in the plant. Damage uh, among is likely damaged among some of the places was smoke and water and only uh, is in the small area of the plant. Crews from Luzerne County and Schuylkill County responded to that fire in West Hazleton. Well, firefighters rushed to the Berwick Hospital Center this morning. Smoke filled a room at the 16th Street facility around 6 a.m. It turned out to be a small electrical fire involving some heat tape. No one was hurt. There was no evacuation at the hospital in Berwick. 
Kingston police arrested a 19-year-old Plains Township man and charged him with holding up the Turkey Hill on Main Street. The robbery happened around 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon. It was only a short time later that this man, Michael Davis, was arrested and charged after a brief foot chase. He was charged with robbery and several other related counts. He was arraigned by District Judge James Topper in Kingston Township and committed to the county prison for lack of $25,000 bail. A Hazleton woman who had been missing has been found, and she's safe. Deborah Malone had been missing for about three days. She was found in a home on Pine Street in the downtown. According to police, she was taken to the hospital for treatment of some minor injuries. Well, a mother from West Penn Township is behind bars after she tried to drown her one-month-old daughter. Rachel Fos was charged with attempting to drown her baby Friday evening. According to West Penn Police Chief Brian Johnson, she, he arrived at the home on Gulf Road and found the mother sitting outside. When he questioned her, she said, quote, I tried to drown my baby, end quote. According to the chief, she showed no emotion. The baby was taken to St. Luke's Hospital Coaldale campus to be checked out. No word on the baby's condition today. Foose was arraigned Friday afternoon and was sent to the Schuylkill County Prison in lieu of $500,000 bail. Well, time for a first look at our forecast with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garabachik, who is in the Weather Center. And Joe, is it going to stay warm out like it's been today, or can we expect some colder weather to move in? Well, we got a little bit of some cooler temperatures to deal with in the seven day forecast. Also have some rain to deal with as well, but no rain today. Rain down toward the south from Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia through the Carolinas. But we stay on a dry side of things and we'll stay dry as we head into this evening. Uh, temperature wise, actually not too bad over the past 24 hours. Some of those low temperatures, a little bit chilly, dropping down generally into the 30s. But right now, temperature-wise, 52 in New Angola, 52 in Berwick, as well as Monoy City, and 54 degrees in Bloomsburg. The complete seven-day forecast coming up in just a few. Gary? Thanks, Joe. Coming up next, details on a press conference about Hazleton's finances. Plus, it's time to get your chimney cleaned. Our Julie Stefanovich has what you need to know coming up next. You're watching WYLN News with Ann Gownley, Gary Perna, Julie Stefanovich, Paula Degnan, Chief Videographer Mike Lula, Weather with Meteorologist Joe Garbacek, Sports with Eric DeBerardinis, and Gabriella Justin. Hi, I'm Jeff Cassette, and I want to be your next Mayor of Hazleton. I was born, raised, and continue to live right here on Alter Street. I was brought up in a family business where I learned hard work and dedication. In 2012, I helped initiate the Hazleton Playground Revitalization Project, which started with three of our local playgrounds. In 2013, I was elected to City Council. Since then, I have introduced legislation to improve the quality of life for the citizens of Hazleton. It's time for new leadership. Vote Jeff Cassatt. There is something new to look for at your local SureSave supermarket. And quite frankly, when it comes to quality and price for your food, it's the best yet. The best yet means hundreds of items packaged at the peak of perfection and priced for the family budget. Look for the best yet label at your locally owned SureSave supermarket. When you see it, be assured of the great taste at a great price whenever you need it. From canned to fresh to frozen for quality products at a better price, the best yet now at your local SureSave supermarket. We're here. We're here to fight this. We're here with board certified oncologists. We're here with access to genetic counseling, clinical trials, and the most advanced treatment options. We're here with the strength of the region's leading health network. And now we're here in Hazleton, the new LVHN Cancer Center. We're here for you. Tuesday, Hazleton City Mayor Giulianuzzi will present his final budget for the city. The mayor has called a press conference for Tuesday, October 27th at 2 p.m. in the auditorium at City Hall. Mayor Giulianuzzi will be joined by City Administrator Tom Prabula at the press conference. In the budget, we are expected to see how the city will pay for the IIRA settlement. The city has to pay over $1 million to the ACLU. Also, what will the mayor set the next mayor's pay at? And will there be any money in the budget for cops? Those questions should be answered at the press conference, which is set for tomorrow at 2 p.m. 
in City Hall. 11th District Congressman Lou Barletta has asked Governor Tom Wolf to release federal education funds already appropriated. Barletta sent a letter, leading a letter signed by seven other members of Pennsylvania's congressional delegation whose school districts have been hit by the budget impasse. The letter said, quote, holding federal education funding hostage during this bud the state budget impasse is unacceptable. Wolf has not yet responded to the letter sent by Barletta. Butler Township supervisors have announced that they've, ex they've exempted the period for open burning in Butler Township. An exemption period will begin now through Saturday, November 14th. A permit is not required for burning in the township during this time, and the 500 feet requirement has also been lifted for this period only. The fire department does not need to be notified when burning will be going on. All burning must be supervised. The hours for burning are 7 a.m. through 4 p.m. Monday through Saturday. There will be no burning permitted on Sunday. Residents are reminded that this exemption period is for leaves, yard and garden cleanup only and not for burning household items. The supervisors reserve the right to cancel this open burning period should conditions become too dry in Butler Township. Well, Tuesday, November 3rd is quickly approaching, and WYLN is proud to announce that we have the most, divi most diverse, most opinionated, and well-known group of political figures for this year's live local election coverage. The election panel will be led by our Tiffany Cloud, host of WYLN's The Storms, the area's leading political talk show. Cloud will be joined by returning panelist, attorney Bill Vinsco. Vinsco is a has been a long fixture in the area political scene for years. New to the panel this time is Bob Stevens. Mr. Stevens taught government and economics in the Hazleton area for 30 years. He also held a number of positions in local government, including including a term on Hazleton City Council. Also new to the panel is Charlie Burkhart. Burkhart was a teacher in the Freeland area for 38 years and has served in countless community leadership positions, including a seat on Hazleton City Council. Of course, WYLN's Ann Galney, Eric DeBardinas, Gabriella Justin, and myself, along with the rest of the WYLN team, will be out in the field covering various races in our area. So make sure you tune in to WYLN on November 3rd, starting at 8 p.m. And remember, WYLN, your election station. Coming up next, Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic is back in with a full look at your forecast. Stay tuned. Four years ago, D.A. Salavantis promised to end corruption, yet she dismissed in secret over three dozen valid DUI charges. In one case, a woman over two times the limit told police she was filthy rich and knew people. Her case was tossed twice by Salavantis, once after the case was refiled by police. One offender almost ran over two police officers and another hit a house. Three were tossed for offenders represented by lawyers affiliated with her first assistance law firm. Luzerne County needs real change. Vito DeLuca for District Attorney. Penn State is right here in the Hazleton area. We're top ranked by corporate recruiters. We have four year degrees, so you can finish here or at another Penn State campus. There's new scholarship money available. And there's no application fee when you visit here. Penn State Hazleton. Download your application fee waiver at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. Family owned and operated, the experienced professionals at Lehigh Tire have served the residents of the greater Hazleton area for over 55 years. From our full line of passenger, light truck and commercial tires, to our automotive services including tune-ups, inspections, oil changes and alignments. Every time I've ever done business here, they've, they've been very polite, straightforward and the job gets done quickly and right. Find the right tire for the right price today at Lehigh Tire. Well, not a bad way to begin our work week. We have clear to mostly clear skies overhead. Not bad temperature-wise. Some of those nights, though, have been kind of cool. We've got some rain to talk about in our forecast. We'll get to that in a little bit. But first, we can talk about the weather map for today. And, you know, overall, not too bad. The high pressure has been in control. And that allowed us to see the sunshine across our area. Just a few of those high thin clouds, but that's about it. Rain-free conditions. Those rain-free conditions will stick around even as we head through this evening through tonight 
and tomorrow. Not looking too bad. Nothing to show you. Live 35 Skycast Doppler. We're dry. Mid to upper 40s right now outside our station in Hazleton. Winds uh, not really much existent, generally under 5 miles per hour. 52 in Mount Pocono, 57. Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport, 60 degrees in Allentown, 57 in Williamsport, 54 in State College. Still hanging in the 50s in the Wyoming Valley area. Again, wind's not much of a factor. An increase in clouds as you head toward the south, some precipitation down toward the south. But for our area, we stay on a dry side of things as we head through this evening and through tonight. Then those clouds will start to be on the increase as we progress through tomorrow. We will stay dry. Then after midnight, tomorrow night, and as we go into our Wednesday, some heavier, steadier rain will move into our region uh, right through Wednesday, into Wednesday evening. And out could you give us a decent amount of rain? Notice these temperatures tonight falling into the 30s. Tomorrow we're up into the 50s. And as we head into tomorrow night, yeah, temperatures are only going to be dropping down into the upper 40s. So the rain advances toward the north tomorrow, but we stay on a dry side of things. We're not going to have to worry about any precipitation, like I said, until after midnight tomorrow night and as we go into our Wednesday. And speaking of our Wednesday, here's a look at the extended forecast. we got rain in store for our region and then some leftover showers going into Thursday. Actually, Wednesday will be the mildest day that we see. Should be up into the 60s. Then we got chilly weather for our Friday and Saturday, which happens to be Halloween. And then in the 50s as we go into early next week, maybe another chance of a shower or two by early next week. Our daytime Pennsylvania lottery number is the pick 256, the pick 3391, and the pick 47544. The pick five numbers, 17027, and the treasure out numbers, 313, 14, 21, and 25. Stick around. We'll continue to have much more for you coming up after this break. Who is Scott Cahalan? I'm Scott Cahalan, independent candidate for Hazleton City Mayor. On my watch, Hazleton will get cleaned up and get its pride back. I pledge not to run for re-election. I'm focused on tackling the tough stuff, not on politics as usual. And if I have to do it myself, I'll fill potholes. You can vote for one of the other two who helped get the city into this mess, or you can vote Cahalan for mayor. Did you know that suicide rates are on the rise in Luzerne and Wyoming counties? Did you know that over 100 Americans commit suicide every day? And did you know that you can help prevent suicide? I'm Jeffrey Wan. I'm here to tell you there is help. If you or someone you know is depressed, dial 800-273-TALK or the emergency helpline at 211. For more information and suicide prevention tips, visit any of these websites. Together, we can save lives. Combined Insurance makes it easy to protect you and your loved ones by paying cash directly to you when you need it most. Whether you're looking for accident and sickness, disability, or life coverage, Combined Insurance has a policy to meet your needs and fit your budget. Call John Ravello, 570-499-0504 for an appointment to help determine the best coverage for you. That's John Ravello, 570-499-0504. Well, we have some tips on keeping your home safe this winter season. Our Julie Stefanovich has more on how you can keep your chimney, chimney clean and safe. Old Man Windsor will soon be making his way into northeastern Pennsylvania. Households throughout the area will be cranking up their heating units. Without proper maintenance, the risk of fires and carbon monoxide poisoning are likely to increase. Today, we spoke with a local chimney cleaning expert. Well, every year before you, the burning season starts, you definitely should get your furnace inspected and also your chimney cleaned and inspected. Because today with modern, modern uh, furnaces such as gas and oil, uh, they're venting into generally old technology furnace, or chimneys and they, they cause damage. The chimneys start falling apart from the inside out. So that's why it's extremely important to get them cleaned and inspected every year. Coal, gas, and oil units can cause carbon monoxide to build up. Wood stoves and fireplaces can result in chimney fires. Yearly maintenance is important in keeping your family safe and sound. There are some warning signs to keep an eye out for. Well, one thing that they, they look for whenever you get your chimney or furnace cleaned is in the bottom of the chimney, you look for pieces 
of the, the chimney actually because like I said it falls apart from the inside out so once you see pieces of the the chimney at the bottom laying down you know that it's time to get some get some work done to your chimney well to fix that what we do is replace the chimney liner we install the stainless steel pipe and that way that contains all of that carbon monoxide all of the smoke all the exhaust from your appliance and it's contained within a stainless steel pipe if it is bad enough we will have to replace some brick or chimney block but if you catch it in time yes all it is is a stainless steel pipe that goes inside the chimney paul stresses preventative maintenance to keep everything in working order you can contact him at clean sweep chimney service in mcadoo by calling 570-677 6535. Reporting for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Thanks, Julie, for those tips. Coming up next, Gabriela Justin is in for Eric DeBardinas here with WYLN Sports. Stay with us. In a desperate political attack ad, Vito DeLuca claims DA Salavanis secretly dismissed DUI cases. This is false. And the truth is in the public records and papers, but Vito knows that. While she's been putting bad guys away, DeLuca's been defending criminals to get them off easy or back on the streets. That is true. Like these law enforcement agencies endorsing Salavanis DA and not DeLuca, integrity makes all the difference. Sports on WYLN is sponsored in part by Burger Family Dealerships, Harry's U Pullet, Fairway Chevrolet, Penn State Hazleton, Barber Ford, The Wire Guys, Tri-County Business Machines, Weatherwood Nursing, Hazel Park Quality Meats, John Diana Insurance, Mobility by Stephen, Service Electric, Hazleton, SJ Kowalski Plumbing and Heating, Coordinated Health, Grand Central, and Third Base Luncheonette. Welcome to WYLN Sports, I'm Gabriella Justin. Week 8 of Friday Night Lights took place this past Friday. Fans in Northeastern Pennsylvania bundled up for some high school, high scoring games. We start out at Marion Catholic where the Colts took on the Mahanoy area Golden Bears. Colts Ethan Kuznowski with a pitch to Hunter Noss. Noss runs it in for a 20 yard touchdown. Now it's the Golden Bears turn. Mason Ryan here, breaking tackles until he is eventually forced out of bounds. Marion Catholic with possession again, and are we surprised? It's KJ Stir with back-to-back -back highlights here with a 20-yard carry, and again, here's the All-Star breaking tackle after tackle. Next, it's Hunter Noss once again with a 20-yard touchdown himself for Marion. The Colts with a 35-7 victory over the Golden Bears. We're going to move it on over to Kingston, where Hazleton traveled out to play Wyoming Valley West on Friday night. Devin Weidman with our first Valley West highlight. He runs it in for a long touchdown here. And next, after the Cougars punter drops and recovers, it's Sean Judge who makes this top play-worthy return. He dodges monstrous tackles, making some great blocks by his teammates, and eventually it's Judge knocked out of bounds by Hunter Van Bargen. Finally, right before the end of the half, the big man LJ Wesneski with this walk in the park touchdown. The Spartans will eventually follow up this touchdown right here with a two point conversion. You'll see some celebration, the two point conversion coming up right now. And it's the Spartans with that 49 to three victory over Hazleton. Out in Dallas, Crestwood suffered a 21 to six loss. Here Crestwood with their only points of the game, Connor Shalosky with this touchdown, the extra point blocked by the Mountaineers, Dallas ended the game in style with a nice QB sneak at the end of the second half, giving Dallas their fourth win of the season. From high school football to the collegiate level, on Saturday, the Penn State Nittany Lions starting quarterback Christian Hackenberg broke Zach Mills' career completions and passing yardage marks. The juniors set a new Penn State record during Penn State's win over Maryland. And with at least five games left in the 2015 season, Hackenberg is expected to break even more records before the season ends. Later tonight, we'll have a recap on last Friday night's games of the week where Hazleton boys soccer team hosted Berwick at Harmon Guys Stadium. Stay tuned. Coming up next, Joe Garbacek is in with one final look at tonight's forecast. 
If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. WYLN is proud to announce a huge technical upgrade to our channels that will bring a better digital picture and expanded coverage area to viewers all over northeastern and central Pennsylvania. In addition to channel 35.1 in Hazleton, you can watch a crystal clear picture in Berwick and Columbia County on channel 47.1 and in East Stroudsburg on channel 24.1. And we're proud to announce Pennsylvania's newest TV station, channel 9.1 in Williamsport, serving Lycoming, Montour, Northumberland, and Union Counties. Now more than ever, WYLN is your local network. off the beaten path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed. All right. Well, we got nothing to show you. It's dry. It's been a pretty nice day today to start our work week across northeastern and central Pennsylvania. And if you didn't get a chance to enjoy your Monday, Tuesday looking pretty nice as well. But then we got some uh, heavier rain that's going to make its way into our area. I think as we go after the midnight hour as we start going into our Wednesday, throughout Wednesday, eh, probably going to have to keep the umbrella handy, but at least it's going to be on the mild side. Temperature should be up into the 60s by then, but then we have some cool weather to talk about across our area. Now, these temperatures actually is not too bad. We got looking at temperatures in the 50s. We'll take it for this time of year. <laughs> We get a lot of fluctuation this time of year. You know, we can still see some warmer days, some very cold days, and, yeah, and even some snow we've already had for Halloween. For this Halloween, no snow. I can tell you that right now. That's the good, good news. But we do have some rain to talk about. That rain will start to advance into our region, like I said, going into our Wednesday and throughout the day and throughout the evening hours. So be prepared for that. But until then, enjoy a nice looking Tuesday because it will be nice. We'll see sunshine. We'll see some clouds mix in with that sun. But other than that, a pleasant day to be outdoors. It will be a stunning of a Tuesday. Hopefully you will be able to enjoy it. Here's a look at the extended forecast and what you can expect over the next couple of days. A dry one for tomorrow. A very nice day. Temperatures getting up into the uh, 50s. It's even milder as we go into our Wednesday. We'll deal with the 60s, but we have to deal with some rain. It's been dry around here, so we'll get the rain around, and that's okay. We can use it. And uh, Thursday, some showers are around. Not looking too bad. A little cooler. And then for our Friday and our Saturday, and of course we know Saturday is Halloween, it's going to be a chilly one only in the upper 40s. We got some of those nighttime lows again dropping down into uh, the lower 70s and back up into the 50s. So heading into next week with Halloween that like that for it's going to be a little cool out at night trick or treating. Uh, yeah, days. probably averaging 40s give or take something like that. Great. Of yeah. course Halloween's known for scary things. You brought up snow. That scares me. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you've, you've I, had to live here all your life and you will have known that anything can happen. We've well, already had snow in I've October heard for Halloween. That it'll be the the snowiest winter we've had in a while, but not the coldest. It won't be as cold as last year. Is that right? It's going well. You know how I am with long-term stuff. Stuff <laughs> changes around, but it looks like it. Well, it looks like it could be milder, but kind of wet. Okay. Yeah. What are you going? What are you going for Halloween as? <laughs> the end. Of, the end of I don't yet. I haven't decided yet. No, yeah. I have not. Maybe I'll go as a meteorologist. What do you think? Are you going to borrow Joe's tie? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Maybe my orange one won't work. Here. <laughs> oh, oh, my. Oh, boy. Anyway. Yay. Anyway, thanks for joining us, everyone, here on WYLN News. Remember, you can get all our top stories and information on our website, Facebook page, and Twitter page. He's going to do it all. He's going to be anchoring sports <laughs> every. So I'm just going to get out of the way. Let him take over. 
thanks for joining the entire team here, everyone. Remember, Election 3rd is Election Day. We'll have all your coverage for you that you need Tuesday night here on WYL. And lots of stories about election coming up in the next couple of days here. We'll have all that for you. And uh, we'll go track down Joe, maybe. Nah, I, I couldn't let this happen. <laughs> all right. See you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great night.